Okay. Good morning, everyone. Today is the 28th of August, 2022. And today we have the great pleasure of having four wonderful and marvelous and colleagues from Bolivia. So let me, uh, as usual, let me share my screen so we can know what is going to happen today. And the okay, PPT. If you switch off your microphones, please. Okay, welcome to our 80th International English Online Meeting. Today is the August uh, 28th, 20, uh, 28, 20, 2022. And let's reflect as usual. Could you please, Katia, help me with this quote and express your opinion? Good morning, good morning, everybody. All right, what a teacher is, is more important than what he teaches. What do you think? That's a really nice quote, Jaime, and it's a, it's a truth. Okay, thank you. Raj, with the second one, could you please tell me? A teacher's purpose is not to create students in his image, but to develop students who can create their own image. Yeah, so what it's saying is develop each student in their own essence. Yes, that's true. Next one, uh, Maria Elba, please. Invest in our teachers and our children will succeed. Barbara Obama. Yeah. Barack Obama, excuse me. <laughs> oh, that's okay. And anything it's, to say? Uh, it's very interesting and it's and it's true because uh, we can get the success of our teachers invest in our uh, being better teachers all the time. Okay. And the last one, uh, Beatriz. We are not just teachers, we are the managers of the world's greatest resource, children. And that's, that's absolutely true. You know, we, we teachers sometimes forget that we have the power to uh, make this country, to make this society, to make the world better because we touch their souls. So yes. I like it very much, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, so all the videos that we have already recorded, you can of them are over there. Uh, look, this is a wonderful friend, Ilka Guzman with Bermudez, Dennis Montaño. They will be talking to us on September 11th. Then we will have this wonderful on Sunday, they please from, from uh, Costa Rica. Then our next round table uh, with Professor Jose Lobo and Ulises Cordova. Then speakers from uh, Mexico, we will have Araceli Salas, Gabriela Ladron de Guevara, Marco Aparicio, and Gabriela Osornio. That'll be on October the 9th. Then our great, great friends from Argentina, they will be present on Sunday, the 13th of October. Eugenia Carrion Cantón, Marina Suraz, Marina Gonzalez, Claudio Juin or Juin, I don't know, Maria del Valle, Yuri Olivares. And then we will have good, good friends from Guatemala, Celeste Lemus, Joselín Natalie Garcia, Mercilinda Ortiz, Mario Villagran, Jerena Villair Noj, on November the 27th. And who is presenting today? Our good friends, Beatriz, Maria Elba, Jose Mendivil, and Katia Seran. Let me say a little bit about them. Uh, Beatriz Serazo, Fulbright alumna, holds a master's degree in TESOL and is a highly committed and collaborative teacher trainer. She has presented uh, in national and international conference promoting students' autonomy, motivation, reflective learning, teaching, and critical thinking. Katia Teran uh, holds a psychopedagogy degree, English alphabetizing teacher trainer. She has a diploma in initial education and has been invited to work abroad, giving classes to elementary students. So I will invite you to Peru, my dear Katia. That will be great. Jose Mendivi <laughs> Mi casa es tu casa. 
uh, from Bolivia also asked for a master's degree in higher education. He's given several workshops as a Pearson freelancer. He worked as a teacher. He worked as a teacher. Let me admit somebody else. He worked as a teacher uh, for more than 12 years and a teacher counselor for more than five years. Uh, he's given several workshops as a Pearson freelancer. And since 2019, he has been the academic director of Centro Boliviano Americano La Paz. I promise I will visit you in your Centro Boliviano Americano, my dear Jose. And finally, the last but not the least, Maria Elba Zambrana Cochabamba, Bolivia, English, French, oh la la, and Spanish teacher, normal Católica Licenciatura Administración Educativa, Católica Licenciatura Profocon, Universidad Pedagógica, Diplomados, Educación Superior, UDABOL, Técnicas de Enseñanza de Idiomas y Diplomado, Training Teacher, Thames Valley University, London, England, Online Teacher, Training Course, Shaping the Way We Teach English, Oregon University, USA, and Presidenta de Zeta Beta in the years of 2019 and 2021. She loves to be English teacher and apply many methodologies and techniques, especially song and games. So dear, uh, dear Marie Elba, Ma, uh, Beatriz, Jose and Katia, thank you so much for your time on a Sunday morning and thank you for So the screen is yours and you may start with your presentation. The first question, okay, let me see just a minute. The first question is, how would you describe the reality of the teaching learning process in Bolivia? How would you describe the current reality of the teaching learning process in Bolivia? Not only at the schools, but also at universities. So who is going to start, Beatriz? Maria Elvita, Maria Elvita is yes. going to okay, begin. Maria. I'm going to start. Okay. Cream is all yours, dear Maria Elba. Can I uh, share your screen? Yes. Sure. Yeah, okay. We can see it, Maria Elba. We can see it. Yeah, I am. I am working on it. Okay, is it okay? Yes, yeah, yes. it's okay, it's okay, go on. Okay, um, I am going to talk about the teaching and learning, uh, the reality of teaching learning process in Bolivia has changed since the government established the new educational reform with the law of 70 Avalino Signani and Elizardo Perez. This law was launched on December 20, uh, 2010. It promotes the productive education as its model was taken from Guarisata Escuela Ayu that sought to build community knowledge inspired by traditions. Uh, traditions. Now, the, it, it is called Escuela Superior de Formación de Maestros and it is a big building, very modern, and uh, have more than eight specialities to teach to the teachers. And uh, the, so I am going to talk about uh, a little about the plurinational system, uh, has three subsystems, that is regular education, schools, fiscales, privadas, and the convenio, alternative and special education and vocational training, higher education. I am going to talk about the first one, regular education. They are schools, uh, I'm going to talk about the public school. Public school of government in English classes have only eight hours per month for teach English. And the government design and provides us the curriculum with the contents and also uh, gives the students free learning textbooks. We have to follow all the, all the contents that the, the Minister of Education sent us, but we can change according to the region. 
that is called curricular design, region curricular design. In public, in public uh, schools, um, the, the teachers uh, can change a little of, of his contents, as I said before, uh, thinking in the regional, um, regional curriculum, okay? Uh, in public schools, uh, we can say also that um, all the teachers that teach in public, in public schools are licenciados in comunicación, lenguaje y lengua extranjera. Uh, because in, in, 19, in uh, 2015, more or less, all the teachers in Bolivia have to take a profocon, formación de maestros, no? And they give us the title of licenciatura. So all the teachers starting in uh, 2015 have licenciaturas. Uh, also the, um, the teachers that uh, uh, comes from the universities and also um, teachers that don't have uh, any title to teach. So um, uh, now why I'm going to talk about the Escuela Superior de Formación de Maestros. Uh, the plurinational state, first of all, closed the, all the private institution because they say that uh, one of the rule in, uh, in the education, in the, um, one of the rules of the Código de la Educación, uh, the only institution that have to, to, learn, to prepare teachers was the Escuela Superior de Formación de Maestros. Now it depends on it, and this institution have worked with contents that the government establishes and develops in the curriculum plan with four methodological steps, practice, theory, assessment, and productions. Um, how is the teacher training in Bolivia? All the changes about teacher training in Bolivia deals with topics and curriculum, uh, institutional pedagogic procedure. Superior Teachers Training College has different units uh, training such general units and foreign language units for the students who will become English teachers. The curriculum is based on the social community and productive model to get the development of inter and interdisciplinary processes. Teachers training manage communicative and textual process according to the context always according to the, top, the, the, the context, because we have uh, in Bolivia, we have Altiplano, Valle, and Llanos. These institutions belong to the government and follow the law education and regulations of the law. Which are the degrees modalities at Superior Teaching College? Um, are systematization, systematization of ed educational experience, uh, production of text for curriculum development and academic excellence. Uh, they, the students have to prepare um, a study in his institution or could be in other institution to, to give the educational experience. This educational, this educational experience also has a, a universal uh, the education must be universal, productive, free, multilingual, multicultural education in all the levels. The, all the change about the, the training in Bolivia depends on the pedagogic procedure. Okay? Uh, the curriculum is based on social communicative 
of develop intra and interdisciplinary um, processes. Teachers training manage the foreign language, developing the linguistic skills through dialogic, communicative, and textual processes according always of the context. This institution below to the government and uh, excuse me, I am I am again in the same. Yeah, and I think that it's all uh, or, um, that I can say about the uh, normales catolicas that I, uh, now is uh, co uh, calling um, English. Um, okay, thank you. Superiores de enseñanza para los profesores. Thank you so much, Elvita. I think Katia could tell us a little bit more how is the teaching and learning process in private, uh, primary and secondary schools? Thank you, Matricita. Yes, uh, when, well, I'm gonna talk about it. Uh, when we talk about private schools, uh, first of all, uh, the private schools in Bolivia compared to public schools are, are, are less, around 800, 30 schools, uh, private schools are in Bolivia according to the statistics. So the, when we talk about private schools in Bolivia, it's necessary to say that uh, there are three types uh, based on the English hours they, they provide because we're talking about right uh, the English periods that teachers give. So the first, uh, first type of private school is the one that is very, uh, very similar to the public school with only eight periods uh, of English a month uh, distributed in weeks. And then we talk about the second type of private schools that uh, is the one that provides uh, maybe a higher service and uh, in the English area. So these uh, schools uh, give uh, like, uh, for example, uh, a six period uh, English period a week. So uh, the students learn or have more periods of English uh, through the week. And the last, the last type of uh, private schools are the ones that, uh, that provide um, all the subjects in English. So uh, these uh, schools uh, have the, like a double schooling because they, they start from seven to three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, these ones are, um, as I said, uh, all the, the subjects are given in English. So those are the three types of private schools we have and the uh, modalities that they, they manage uh, with the English uh, classes. And then um, it's, um, it's uh, important to mention that also private schools are controlled and regulated as public schools by the Department uh, Directorate of Education. So we follow a base curriculum and a regionalized curriculum also, according to the region uh, where the city is located. So yes, uh, we follow the, the same model, uh, productive socio community educational model as the public schools, right? So that's important to, to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katia. Uh, what about the institutes in Bolivia, Jose Manuel? Well, thank you very much, Beatriz. Good morning to, to all of you. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure to be among such great professionals. Um, well, talking about uh, the, the, the reality of the teaching learning process in Bolivian institutes, I can say that there are big differences between one institute and the others. I think it's important for me to say that there are more than 150 institutes in Bolivia. Just in La Paz, right before the pandemic, there were 71 institutes. During the pandemic, sadly, a lot of teachers got the ax and set up their own institutes. Most of them are not well structured. I mean, they don't even have a flow chart just a few of them, just a few of them, uh, and I can honestly say that no more than 30 institutes have academic directors, coordinators, or teacher counselors. That means most teachers do not have their work supervised. In fact, nowadays, several English teacher, teachers work as freelancers, private teachers. 
they do not follow a definite English program. Several institutes offer unreal English programs, like getting students ready for the TOEFL in three months or six months. In my humble opinion, having students attend one hour classes three times a week is not enough. Besides, there are no requirements in order to, to get a job at these institutes. You just have to speak English. Unfortunately, some teachers do not have the expected English level. The good thing is that we know that you can improve your English level by, by teaching. And looking on the bright side, we have realized that English is not only a privilege, but a necessity. That's why I can say that now there are more institutes that have complete English programs that can take up to three years in order to get a certification. Their teacher's work is supervised and they are part of continuous training programs. So they are up to date regarding current ELT approaches. For example, where I work, teachers have the chance to sign up for at least three different teacher development training courses, some offered by the US Embassy and others offered by editorials, in our case, by Pearson. That's what I have to say about English institutes in Bolivia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Jose Manuel, and I think it would be my turn to talk a little about how the universities work with the teaching and learning uh, process of English. In Bolivia, we have the national system of universities, and uh, uh, they are universities that are public universities, and it's just four private universities belong to the system. Uh, we call them the system because they coordinate what they are going to be teaching, they coordinate their activities, they coordinate how students are going to graduate from the different degrees that they offer. Uh, I said that all the public universities belong to the system and only a few private universities such as Catholic University, Escuela Militar Ingeniería, um, the, the police university, belong to the system. And they, they are independent from the Ministry of Education. Now, all the other private universities, uh, they respond to the supervision and organization that the Ministry of Education demands from them. So the system is kind of independent. Regarding specifically the training of English teachers, uh, except the uh, Universidad Indígena, the Universidad Minera Siglo XX, and the Universidad Amazonica, and the Universidad Policial, all of the other universities provide courses for their students in English, and except the Universidad uh, Escuela Militar de Ingeniería and Universidad Amazonica, they have uh, degrees in linguistics and languages. I currently work at a higher university of San Andres, and our students have to do study with us like for five years. And uh, at the end, after they graduate, they, they can decide if they want to, um, to become researchers, translators, majority of them, they would like to become teachers. Now, also majority of the universities that provide uh, language courses or they have linguist degrees, linguistics degrees, they also have their own centros de idiomas or language institute. Uh, uh, the, the objective of having this language institute is to provide opportunities for in-training teachers so they can you know, practice, they can gain experience. So when they, uh, they, they, they finish their work on what they were just graduated, they become better professionals in the area. At OMSA right now, um, the name of the, uh, our institute is called SETI and they provide courses of English for uh, English teach, I'm sorry, for uh, students from all the university. UMSA is it's a really big one. We have more than 84,000 students. Majority of them access these, uh, these uh, courses. Of course, if they want to, they can go to other institutions. Now, there is this interesting situation. Majority of our students would like to become English teachers, French teachers, or Aymara teachers. However, they are not always accepted to be work in the public system of the schools. So they cannot be teachers as, as such as Maria Elvita, for example. 
because they have not graduated from the Escuela eh, Superior de Maestros. And that is something that reduces the possibility of work that students, that, that our graduates have. And the preparation they receive, it's, it's, it's very complete because at the same university, they have opportunities to learn the language and then to, uh, for at least four different semesters, they have four different courses in which they can experience how to teach uh, English, specifically in this case. So they are really well prepared for the field, but they cannot be part of the public system. So I, as graduated of UMSA, I cannot teach at public school. So that is something very interesting that happens in my country. Uh, what is the advantage of being a student at the university that we are always improving, that we always experiment new things? So the people that graduate from universities, they are in contact with the new trends in teaching English, with the new trends in translation also, and new trends in research. That is an advantage. There are young minds with young ideas that could be taken. Majority, as um, Jose Manuel mentioned, majority, you know, they can go and work at a private institute where they can teach English. Uh, universities have their own syllables, and uh, that that brings the opportunity to the professors that we work there to improve term by term, to bring new trends and to have, I think, better products. I'm very proud of our system. I'm not going to say that it's perfect, but it's in the, in it, we are on our way to being perfected. Thank you. I think we can go to our next question, dear Jaime. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much, my dear friends from Bolivia. Before going on, let me say thank you to people who are connecting in Facebook Live, like Debra Suarez. Uh, she, she has a question, so I would like to take note of it so you can answer it at the end of the four questions. She says, can someone share insights in teaching English to adult learners in your national context? How is adult ESL run? What are some issues? So we also want to thank Solcito, Araceli, and all the people who are uh, connected in Facebook Live and, and, also, and have also shared the video. Okay, now let's go, let's go, um, let's go on and continue with the second question. And the second question, as you can see, is what are the principal challenges of the teachers to become professionals in Bolivia? So since you are the coordinator, Beatriz, you tell me who is the, the first one. Mm -hmm. um, I think in this case, I would like to begin and then I'm going to ask Elvita to continue. Okay. Uh, um, as I said, uh, there are just two opportunities for you to become an English teacher in our country. One is to study at the university, and the other one is to become a professional from the Escuela de Formación de Maestros. Now, in, in, in our cases, majority of our students, they want to become English teachers, but they also have to respond to the requirements of the CUB, which is the, the uh, institution that regulates what universities have to do at the moment of graduating uh, a student. So they have to defend a thesis or they have to have an exam degree or a project degree. They may graduate having excellent scores or things like that. However, although these are excellent professionals, so they are, they are not allowed to work in the public system, right? Now, in the university, at the university, you have the opportunity uh, to study for five years, but if, if you want, you can reduce it to four years because you can take extra courses, you can take uh, summer courses as well. Um, it, you can devote, if you can manage, you, you know, to organize your schedule, you can do it in less at a time, but you, can, you have to complete in between, depending on the university, 45 to 50 subjects during your, um, your studies. The only university that is a little bit different is the Universidad de Chuquisaca, the Universidad Mayor y Pontificia de Chuquisaca, that regarding English teachers, they give more emphasis to what to, to the teaching of English. So, so for example, at UMSA, we have specifically six subjects that are uh, for English teachers, and we have like all the other ones that are supporting 
that feel but that are not specific at uh, uh, in Chukisaka, these students have at least 26 specific subjects regarding teaching English. So they are the ones that probably in the region are more accepted to become uh, English teachers. Now, nowadays, thank you, the, the, thank you to the pandemic, there are more possibilities for the teachers to be, um, uh, to have access to uh, professional development, but it does not always happen. Uh, Maria Elvita is going to share with you that sometimes the teachers that work at the public system, they, 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 they the Ministry of Education, the SEDUCAS, they don't accept other professional development opportunities if they are not the ones that they provide. So that's also a challenge that English teachers may have. Finally, I would like to say that we have lots of English teachers in the countryside that uh, they are not allowed to work in, at the schools because nowadays, because of the change that the, the law that Elvita mentioned, Avelino Signani, it's the, what we call los profesores de grado, the, the, the teachers that teach primero, segundo, tercero, first, second, third courses, they have to teach in Spanish, they have to teach Spanish, they have to teach their students English, they have to teach also the native language in the case of La Paz Aymara, in the case of Cochabamba, Quechua. And unfortunately, they do not receive enough support. So that is a big, big challenge for those teachers. Maria Elvita, I think you can give us more light on this aspect. Maria Elvita? I don't know if it's me or Maria Elba. Uh, she has to okay. turn on, to know okay. the microphone. <laughs> since, okay. uh, first of all, since 2015, the new government uh, established that uh, only uh, persons who is graduated from Profocom or University, uh, Universidad Pedagogica de Bolivia uh, that have the um, the, the academic of English teacher, English teacher, uh, uh, study English, Quechua, and some other uh, original uh, language. But before that, uh, SEDUCA accepted to the um, teachers that came from the universities, and also they have uh, teachers that came from the normal Catholica or, or that people who study at the United States, they received. But after that, uh, all of them that was in our, uh, in our system have to take Profocon, first of all, and then the next, uh, the next generation can study at the uh, escuelas superiores de formación de maestros, ¿no? Um, and in the escuela de formación de maestros, that is a model of the Warisata, and maybe you will ask what is the, what is the meaning of uh, Warisata? Is wisdom, seed, sowing, and harvest. So they say that uh, it is wisdom. They know the wisdom of the Aymara uh, region. So they teach there uh, all about the agricultural, but they teach also many of uh, um, specialities. A lot of specialities like um, music, like, um, I, I, I don't remember, maybe the constructions, and so on. And also there are, that we don't mention, are institutes, institutes of the government that uh, we have in, in Bolivia, 27 institutes, uh, institutos superiores de formación, but not, they don't, they don't um, uh, form teachers, but they uh, teach 
another of as universities, another um, uh, subjects like uh, cons construction, electricity, carpenter, etc., carpentry, and uh, um, they they also learn English and they have uh, 16 hours per month. And also the teachers who teach there are from the Seduca. No? Eh, and eh, we Maria have Elba. 27 uh, escuelas superiores. And, uh, talking about the challenges for the teachers to become professionals, uh, it is necessary to continue of English teaching learning processes. And also, I think now it's very important the use of social networks in education to give and have online classes to develop the skills in the English teaching learning process with different tools like Kahoot, TikTok, or Jamboard quizzes, and there are a lot of um, a lot of uh, tools to uh, that we can teach English. So it's necessary that the students have the opportunity to learn more about it. We, we have, uh, all the students with this uh, pandemia have big problems with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the internet. So it's necessary that the professional manage of technological appliance like computers, cell phone, tablets, iPhone and others to be used in, uh, in school classes as tools. The major, the, I think that the major challenge is to use blended or hybrid learning approach. That is what we are using now, but we need more specialization, more knowledge about these techniques. Do you know, we, we, we use synchronous and asynchronous sessions because there are sometimes that we are giving online classes. Then another, another uh, month or, or uh, we are going to teach face-to-face -face classes. So we have to be um, uh, prepared the, uh, the most uh, way. Thank you so much. Uh, there was something else that uh, maybe Elvita can confirm. Uh, because of the political situation of the country, now there are no uh, there are no new students to become English teachers in the yes. institutos or escuela formación de maestros. So yes. the government is giving a look at the situation to decide if uh, English teachers are going to be needed in public schools. So that is also a big uh, challenge because. Uh, uh, we don't know if there's going to be enough professionals in the future to educate students in the public uh, sector. And yes, it is very yes. interesting that we don't have private universities in Bolivia that have these schools. All the English teachers are formed uh, in the public universities, the universities that are part of the system. So that is something interesting that we could consider. Uh, maybe uh, now, um, Jose Manuel, maybe you would like to add something because we don't have institutes that uh, uh, educate teachers. However, some institutes like the Centro Boliviano Americano, you train your own teachers so they can become the type of teacher, English teacher that you want. Isn't that right? Yes, it, it is right. Well, uh, I, I would like to, to mention something about training programs. Besides the fact that it is difficult to, to get a professional degree and to get a job after keeping in mind what you and Maria Elva mentioned, you know that it is not enough to, to get a professional degree. We as teachers have to continuously learn about new trends. In, in my humble opinion, talking about institutes in general, for most teachers, it is difficult to find affordable and complete training programs that can allow them to keep up to date. Another difficulty is the time. Most teachers do not devote the necessary time 
to learn new methods and learn to use the tools to apply those methods. A good outcome of the pandemic is the fact that um, teachers were forced to learn technological tools. Now most teachers can host virtual classes, something that was unthinkable like three years ago. In that context, I think uh, we, we understand the necessity to sign up for courses in order to keep up to date. Nowadays, uh, there are some platforms like Coursera that offer complete training programs. We have to consider this as an investment. Yeah? And at the CBA, I think, where, where I work, I think that we have understood that uh, we are offering our teachers more than uh, three training programs. Some of them can take uh, up to two years in order to complete a program. Uh, many teachers have understood that this is really necessary and have signed up for those programs. Uh, some of them have already finished uh, one or two courses uh, that have to do with fundamentals of teaching English and we are going for more. So it is something that we have to, to keep in mind. It is something that in, in most in institutes are not considering, but because of the competence, I think that we are going that way. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Uh, I had the opportunity to work at that binational center when I was uh, a little bit younger and more beautiful than I am now. And uh, the, the training program of the quality program that the CBA had was very demanding. And uh, they just wanted to, you to be an excellent teacher. So if you were not professionally speaking, if you had not graduated, for example, from uh, a linguistics uh, department, you could go to the CBA and if they accepted you, you received from one year a very intensive training. And then after you were accepted as part of the institu institution, you received a periodically training sessions, sometimes sessions made by the own teachers, like more experienced teachers from the institution, but also, as uh, uh, Jose Manuel mentioned, from other resources. Uh, the point was that you had to be accepted there, and it was not easy. It is not easy to work at a binational center because there's lots of competence. Maybe now Katia can mention something else related to the challenges that we English teachers have. How is it in private schools? Thank you, Beatricita. <clears throat> I would like to mention that uh, for the private schools, uh, the, um, the, uh, the people that hire teachers um, always are um, asking teachers to have this admission test for after you present your curriculum. Uh, we teachers have to go take an admission test to, pro to prove our proficiency in English. So uh, this depends on the level that teachers are going to uh, be hired for uh, elementary, middle, or, or high school. So uh, elementary, maybe you want to take a, a similar uh, proficiency, uh, proficiency test uh, as Michigan, or maybe for high, high school, it's going to be a TOEFL, um, similar one. So uh, that depends, right? So teachers must be prepared to take this test in order to, to, to be able you know, to be accepted uh, at the private schools. So yeah, it's very important for, for, for us to continuously uh, update our English skills and, and get these uh, courses that we have uh, given by not only Pearson, uh, Cambridge College, there are a lot of uh, um, institutions that give us this, this uh, updating classes and we have to take the, the uh, we are compelled. When once we enter to work in a private school, we have to 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 always update our our English skills, right? So yeah, it's important to to point that up. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Hi Mito. Thank you so much, dear friends. We are having a great uh, overall view of what's going on in Bolivia. Now let's go to the question number three. And the question number three is, 
what are something very important, just like the first and second question, what are the English teachers associations being in existence in Bolivia, number one, and how productive are they from your point of view? So I don't know who's going to speak first. Uh, I think the expert here is Maria Elvita, since she has been uh, president of uh, the Bolivian English Teachers Associations more than once. And she be, she's been working helping teachers in Cochabamba for more than 20 years. So All right. okay. she's the expert and I may support a little bit in the end, but she's the one. Okay. Elvita? Your microphone again. Okay, uh, I can say that uh, BETA is an organization, a non-profit organization that was uh, founded 25 years ago. Uh, we founded this, uh, this organization in order to develop the English teaching knowledge. So we have the, we have the help of the um, um, English embassy, uh, of uh, England, we have a, a Proyecto Boliviano Britannico who help us to organize and uh, to form all the associations in Bolivia. Cochabamba was the first one that has an association, more or less 30 or more years ago. So when the Proyecto comes to Bolivia, they establish connection with us and we work with, with them. And uh, this uh, organization uh, gives some scholarship to the teachers to go to London and have um, special courses, especially trainer, uh, trainer teachers school, a trainer teachers um, uh, specialty. And uh, the, um, the British Embassy help us to Cochabamba to form and initiate all the rest of the uh, associations. We have the new one is Pando. That was where we will have the new convention in January. And we have uh, each year, we have now an international convention and we had the first international convention two years ago, ago that was um, prepared, organized with Cochabamba. Uh, it was our first experience with, uh, with the online conventions. Uh, then Sucre was the second and now Pando will give an hybrid con convention. Uh, it will be um, uh, online and uh, presential also. So uh, what, how uh, better uh, apport or give uh, to, to the teachers? We prepare uh, conventions, many seminars during the year, especially in Cochabamba and in Santa Cruz. And uh, also we have, um, we are, we are members and affiliated to the TISOL International and IFTL International. So we can, um, we can participate of that conventions. Uh, the, to the, when, when I subscribe to the TISOL, um, the embassy helped me to travel and, uh, and attend the, the convention in Philadelphia. Then I, I go to with other uh, teachers um, to, to Atlanta and, and another one. So in these in this conventions, we have, uh, we have learned a lot, not only about the organization, but I, I met with different presidents of, uh, of the world president of, of um, association of the world. Uh, in Europe, uh, president, South American, Greek, 
I say that uh, all all the world and this connection with these persons uh, help us to take their seminar webinars and uh, uh, others um, uh, speak uh, charlas to develop our English and our uh, methodologies and techniques to teach English. I think that we have uh, many, many help with these connections and uh, all now are uh, online, um, online, uh, online uh, support. Support, yes. Uh -huh. uh, Thank you so much. I have something more to say about our, our organization that uh, Beta Bolivia must accept all the person that teach English. It's not necessary that they were from the normal Catholica or from the universities or graduated from the other uh, universities. The mission of uh, Beta is to accept all the person that teach English. It's not important uh, the graduation, so it's important. What we want is develop the English teaching in Bolivia. For that, we accept all of them. Centros Bolivianos Americanos. I know that I some difference with other cities, but the mission of Beta is accept all of the English teacher. Some uh, other association don't have good relationship with CBA or, or universe, public university, so they, they have um, something to stop. You don't can uh, uh, belong to the beta. But it, it was created to develop the English teaching in Bolivia. Thank you so much, Maria Eva. And I would like to add, <clears throat> sorry, something else. They do not only promote professional development and create opportunities for English teachers all over the country, especially with the main conference that happens in January every year. And as she mentioned, this is the first time next year in January, it's the first time it's going to happen in Pando. We are very excited about that. Is that uh, many times the different associations in their regions, they have to help teachers find jobs and sometimes they have also to defend the job opportunities for their associates. So yes. it is, it is a, a second job that they, they, they have is that they support the teachers in the labor area. Maria Elvita. Uh, Maria Elvita, your microphone. We as presidents of BETA or presidents of each region, uh, have the opportunity to go to Seduca and ask for some problems that the, the teachers have. And we, we, um, they listen to us and uh, help to, uh, to solve some problems that we have. Uh, the, only that, uh, the only situation that we, we can do is uh, say, I want that this, uh, teacher uh, work in this uh, school. No, we don't have that, uh, that uh, priority, we don't have. But, all, but we can help all the teachers uh, that have, that has pro problems with, uh, with the Seduca, with his classes, with uh, some other kind of problem. And uh, we also uh, have the relationship with the federaciones de maestros, de la nacional and the regional, no? And the federaciones help us also um, to, to get some opportunities to give our, our um, seminars, our conventions. They give us the sign up uh, to our certificates if we need it and they uh, always are behind us, helping us in any problems that we have when the teachers 
are retired or don't accept it to the uh, SEDUCA. Thank you so much. I think I meet to that response. Yeah, it uh, does. It does. It does, the, uh, it does, dear Beatriz. Just a question before we go on to the next question. Um, in the first round table with teachers from Peru, we when we were talking about the associations, we said so everybody agreed that we should have only one organization in the country which uh, 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 accepts people, accepts accepts people from kindergarten, primary, secondary, and university, because the only purpose that a country or as an association should have is to increase and, and improve the, the system of teaching and learning in the country. But, but listening to you too, uh, I see that there are many interests and the different ideas, there are different opinions. Oh, um, that is I, bad I, for the. But, yeah, it, it, uh, it is from, from my point of, but okay. Other ones, it's more. Uh, the 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 support of everyone. Friend feels. I, I am sorry, Jaime, if it, I don't know Hello. if it is my internet connection, but I cannot hear you very well. Yes, and, uh, I, I was saying in, in, in short, in short in a, in a, to put it in a nutshell, that if it is good to have just one uh, general association in the country, there are other ones, okay. one that can have, that, that can uh, reunite uh, the teachers from the different from the different uh, fields, kindergarten, primary, secondary, university. Yeah. Yes. Um, because yes, what uh, we, everybody wants system. Yes, uh, 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 I think uh, Maria Elba mentioned that that is the objective of beta tisol, but it doesn't work that way. Beta, in fact, is just one organization. It's only one, but they have the regional organizations because it's not the same to be working in La Paz that working in Cochabamba or working in Tarija and working in Pando because we have our own um, individualities as regions. Yes, we, we are different, but BETA is only one institution. As she said, unfortunately, some things came difficult. At the beginning, I was part of the uh, Bolivian British project when they came to, to, to Bolivia and everybody was part of it. It doesn't matter oh. if you were working at the school or the university, everybody had to be part of it. But then things changed a little bit. There were some you know, political interventions there. Hopefully with, with new leaders, like the one we have here with Maria Elba, with the people from, uh, uh, from Sucre and the new president of BETA from uh, San, uh, Cobija, we hope that these things are going to be changing slowly because it's something that we have to go back to those origins. Yes, and uh, it is uh, nice to mention that all of, all of uh, the regional association are BETA associations. Yes. Oh, but All of we, them. we call uh, Cochabamba English Teacher Association Beta. La Paz English Teacher Association is Beta. beta. All of them, uh, we are Beta. All belong yes. to Beta. And all yes. works with all the, um, all the rules that Beta has with all the missions and visions that the uh, association has. And we are legally, um, legally, legally established in the, um, in, the, in the government, in the states. We have our um, number of legacy. So uh, SEDUCA recognize us, the Ministerio de, Con de Educación also recognize us. Yes, and thank you. When the, when the cities uh, became beta, for example, is 
to 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 do the the, the national conventions now international conventions. Yes. So this in this uh, once a year one city is is the principal for the uh, convention and is the principal of beta is the president of beta yes thank you so much maria elba for the clarification and now i think it is time to go to the last question uh question number four that we have here i think we uh in a way we have already responded to that question uh english I'm teacher back. <laughs> yes. Hello, hey, thank you so much, Beatrice. Yeah, partially you have answered question number four. And question number four is where can you become a uh, licenciado in lingua inglesa in Bolivia and what are the requirements to graduate? So if you would like to complete the idea that you mentioned before, that would be nice. Thank you so much. Uh, to, to get the degree of licenciatura uh, in uh, linguistics and languages, specifically English, you have to study at uh, any university of the system that has that department. Uh, Universidad Amazonica, uh, Universidad Siglo XX, Universidad Indígena, uh, Universidad Policial, and Universidad Militar, they don't have these degrees. But all the other ones, they have this degree, you have to uh, a study for four to five years. And to graduate, you are asked to uh, first reach at least a minimum B1 level of the language to defend a thesis, either a proyecto de grado or project degree, examen de grado, it's also acceptable. If you have excellent scores, 85% over 100 minimum in all your subjects, also you can graduate a, what we call like Excellency por excelencia. Uh -huh. um, and there are other two more types that you can uh, perform to do it. As part of um, your training, also you can have some internships, you can have some proyecto trabajo dirigido, so where you can teach English, but also you are trained to become a translator or a researcher. There are no private universities. There are no uh, 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 small institutions that can train you to become a linguist. There was a time in which some uh, private institutes such as Centro Boliviano Americano, Americano tried to provide a titulo a uh, nivel técnico superior, which is uh, less than a licenciatura, but unfortunately, because of political situations and the intervention of the Ministry of Education, they were not allowed to. So now the only possibility you have to become a licenciado in linguistica is to go to a university. Because as uh, Maria Elba mentioned, now the, the Profocom does not exist any longer. No, so the but... teachers that, let me finish please, the teachers that worked at public schools they had the opportunity to study at the Profocom in different institutions that they were given the permission to provide these courses. But principally, they were given uh, to, uh, I mean, Universidad, uh, uh, Catholic University, for example, they gave these Profocom courses for a while, but now they are not allowed to. All the institutions have to go to the, um, uh, to, 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 to the institutions that uh, belong to the Ministry of, of Education. However, if you want to get a título en provisión nacional as licenciado en lingüística, you have to study in the system. Mariel. Your microphone, Mariel. Your microphone, Mariel. Uh, in the escuelas, uh, the enseñanza para los maestros y maestras, uh, they have the, the, the speciality of English teachers. And how are the degree modality at Superior Teaching Training uh, College? They have three modalities. Three modalities are, are, are recognized. The first one is system, systematization of educational experiences. The but, second is production, production of tests for curriculum development. But and the third one is academic, 
academic excellence. They prepare all the, all the experience that they want and defend uh, systematically. And then uh, uh, also they produce text and they show when they uh, get the diploma or the, the licenciatura, they defend what they have uh, pro, uh, produced of text um, for curriculum development. And also in all the Escuela Superior de, de Maestros uh, have the academic for excellence, academic excellence. So that they, they do not also, become licenciados, or they do? They do not become licenciados. All of them are licenciados. Okay. Licenciados en comunicación, lenguas y lengua eh, originaria o lengua extranjera. Okay, thank you But so much. They, have, they study five years. Yes, And in thank the, you so much. In the, in, the, um, in the institute, they study four. And so they are... Uh, technicos medios. They have the, the titulo de technicos medios. But these institutions belong to the government. Yes. They do or... not belong the system uh, uh, of university. Yes, of course. I think that responds to your question, Jaimito. Yeah, it did. It did. It did answer. Okay, before we go to the last question, which is uh, any topic you would like to mention, I was reading here in Facebook Live, uh, one of the comments of the president of our English association here in Peru, Arturo Fields Burgos, and he said, that is where a federation or better say a coalition of teachers association stands up as a unifying alternative, my modest opinion. That is something that I mentioned before. It's okay that Beta and all the uh, IPNAS, for example, in Peru, have their own association. But again, don't you think that uh, 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 one unique federation, as Arturo mentions, could help all those teachers from the different uh, fields or not? We don't have other associations of English. The only one. Ah, is okay. Beta. We I, I don't. But I, I have an branches. You know, okay. they are branches. So we have one branch in La Paz, one in Cochabamba. They are beta. But oh, there is okay. all so because they can support better the teachers that are there. But then okay. we have only one. Now okay. sometimes the, the private institutes they have they they, they not the private institutes um, the binational the CBAs they had the FEBI, but they are not for English teachers. It's for the institution. The only uh, association that holds all the Bolivian uh, English teachers is better. So we don't have that thing. The problem is that not everybody feels compelled to be part of beta. They don't feel like they should be part of it, which I, it's an opinion that I respect, but I do not agree with. I think everybody should be part of beta because it's a strong institution. Majority of their associates belong to teachers that work in the public sector specifically in public schools. But thanks to uh, uh, Maria Elba, I am part of BETA. And thanks to other uh, uh, presidents that have been more welcoming in the last years. The problem is that not everybody feels that BETA is a strong institution. It's because they don't know about it. And although BETA has been trying very hard to reach all the English teachers around Bolivia, not everybody listens to them. We have to be honest. It's not only them that they have to reach them, but it's also the English teachers that they have to reach them. We have only one and it's well structured and it's well established and it has not only national, but international support now. Okay, okay, I get it. Here in Peru, if it helps you a little bit to, to learn, uh, we have uh, Peru TISOL, well, which has branches uh, of most, uh, uh, in the most important cities, and Ayatefel. And some regions like Piura, it has uh, uh, Perutec, which is a small, uh, but uh, I was thinking about federation. I still have the idea. And by the way, Max Perez Vera is member of the Perutisol. Hello, Max Perez. 
Hello, hello, good morning. Good morning. Something to say very briefly about the associations or something that you have heard here in, in this uh, panel from our good friends and colleagues from Bolivia. Hello, colleagues from Bolivia. Well, this is Max Perez. I am happy I belong to TESOL Convention. I have been a member for almost 15 years. I am happy for being part of that association. And by the way, you are welcome to participate in coming to a TESOL Convention here in Peru. I don't know if it is going to be online or it is going to be presential. The it point has to is be that face to face. Definitely. It has to be. <laughs> yeah, for all of us. So we before we pass around. away. Before we pass away. Ah, uh, you're right. But anyway, just uh, we think that uh, uh, this terrible situation will soon uh, uh, reaches to an end. Well, uh, actually, here the only association that I really know uh, is about Tissol Peru. There are others, but I am not into into them at all because, uh, apart from being a teacher, I am an accountant. I work in the morning and in the afternoon. Sometimes I, uh, I, I sometimes actually I enroll to different uh, training courses. Uh, but talking about here at, in Peru, for example, when a, when a student finishes. Uh, at university, the only way that they can teach at a good English level is because that student had previously studied at the Language Institute. Why? Because uh, all the information that they received at university is not enough. For example, I teach also at a Language Institute. I teach intermediate, advanced, and conversation. But the problem is that most of my students are coming from that university because even those teachers tell them, okay, guys, here at university, you are going to learn how to transmit, uh, I mean, how to, uh, how to deal with your student in the pedagogical way. However, if you want to intensify your English level, you have to attend yes or yes, the language institute for you to increase your English level. And if you gained the, uh, and if you gain uh, those uh, international certifications, that will be much better. Why? Because in Peru, universities, language institute are obliging these students to hold a degree an international level. If they don't have it, they will just keep the OCBs and they will not call. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much, <laughs> dear Max. Thank you for that. And, and, we also have, and we also have Cynthia and Angela Romay. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Angela Romay. Are you there? It's good timing. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, my dear uh, Angela, Angela Romay. Angela, where are you from, Angela? I'm from La Paz, Bolivia. Ah, hello, dear Angela. Yeah, I'm from Bolivia, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something to say, dear Angela? I think that uh, while you were talking, you were mentioning a question related to teaching English to other people. That was one of the questions. Yes. And I wanted to add because uh, when I work at Catholic University, we have a, the privilege to, to teach this kind of students because I'm part of it. So we teach English to students who are uh, 60, 70. Pretty good. Uh, they are free yeah and so and now when i think that is really a good opportunity because they feel part of part of the society you know that when they uh, become elderly they feel that they are not able to do anything but i think the university what i work catholic university it gives the opportunity okay it gives them the opportunity to be part of the society again and they feel like uh, really aware of the things that they are doing so that's something i wanted to mention and besides that about a uh, profocom, I had a, uh, well, I was wondering, or I don't know if it's a question or maybe a kind of opinion related to it. It was like some of friends of mine who, well, they, they didn't finish their degree, but they were teaching English before. They were part of this profocom, but when they had to get their certificate, they couldn't. So I don't know if it was uh, just for some of them or maybe I am wrong. So that was uh, maybe a kind of question that I wanted a, uh, Maria Elba confirmed, so maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure about but it. That's I think it's it uh, for, for, for because of the time, we're not going to be able to have these discussions, but maybe we could oh, gather together and discuss them. Um, it is true that it's been challenging for many of participants of the Profocoms and these uh, licenciatura programs that don't belong to the university system. It's been difficult for their participants to really get the certificate. 
Another important thing, uh, based on what Max said, I've been uh, presenting at Peru Tisol for the last years. I know Nevdi very well, the president. She's been so nice. She's a great person. Thank uh, you. So Thank I you, hope Beatrice. that next time we're going to be there. Uh, the difference between Peru Tisol and Beta Tisol is that uh, Beta is uh, affiliated to Tisol International and to also IATFL from the UK. So Beta, it, it like, uh, uh, involves everybody there, right? <laughs> and uh, we have the opportunity yeah. to teach young adults, but we don't teach English as a second language. We teach English as a foreign language and that pro uh, gives us like lots of limitation. So I think it is time. I, I would like to keep on talking, but I know that we have to say our goodbyes. Well, if you still have five or 10 more minutes for a few uh, personal questions that I didn't have time to ask you because of the delay before starting our um, our meeting. Like, for example, how long have you been a teacher? For example, me, I have been a teacher for 37 years. What about you, Katia? Um, well, I'm a little bit younger, Jaimito. <laughs> I've been a teacher for 19 years now. Okay. Yeah. I'm very I'm, I'm younger than you in spirit, my dear Katia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. What about you, my dear Jose? Well, I, I have been working at the CBA for more than 15 years, 12 15 years, years as an English teacher, uh, more than three years, five years as a teacher counselor. Uh -huh. Maria Elba? Well, um, I have... Uh, 38 or 39 years of experience as teaching English. You are just not starting not only in American. public school, also in private, <laughs> and also in some uh, private university. Uh, in the uh, Universidad Privada, I work 12 years and I teach uh, five subjects. I teach um, Lenguaje, comunicación oral escrita, comunicación oral, eh, y inglés uno, dos, tres. I Thank also you. work at the uh, other private um, universities. Uh, so, I think all the universities I, I, I teach English or something about uh, Spanish, language. no? Okay. Uh -huh, uh, language. Thank you, Beatriz. Oh, this year uh, I'm going to be in teach. Uh, it's my professional birthday, 30 years. Okay. 30 years of teaching still English young. and still young. Still young. 22 years as a uh, teacher trainer. Second question, my dear uh, colleagues and friends from Bolivia. Why did you decide to become an English teacher? In my Ooh. case, I didn't decide. Life took me to teach. I, I will say that in, in, in my book, not now because I wouldn't finish. Katia, what, what moved you to become an English teacher? First of all, uh, I always knew since very young, I wanted to be an educator. So, and I love children. So I decided to study psychopedagogy or non-educational psychology. And beside that, I always loved English. So I combined those two. And uh, that's how I started uh, teaching um, uh, 19 years ago as a preschool teacher, and then I got specialized in alphabetizing English. Very, uh, very, very interesting. Dear Jose. Yeah. Jose? Uh, sorry. In my case, dear Jaime, it's just like uh, yours. Uh, it was fate that led me to teach English. I studied uh, computer science. I got a licenciatura in informatics, but I was also uh, a student at the CBA, and I was a good student because I like English, <laughs> to tell you the truth, and I was invited to teach English. I took the opportunity, and I liked it very much, so and we I never the, left it. We almost have the same story, my dear. Yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, uh, I, I'll go to Bolivia to talk to you. And yes, yes, you will be welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Beatriz? Oh, it's the same story, nothing new. I used to be a veterinarian at the time. I My needed the goodness. money. <laughs> Somebody said, why don't you teach English? And uh, 
I first I said no because that was not an idea. It was a, a doctor of animals, right? But then I accepted. I fell in love with my teacher, my students. I fell in love with the profession, and here I am, thirty years later. Okay, and finally, Maria Elba. Well, um, I want I, I wanted to be a doctor, but the the year that we get a bachelor's or graduated of the schools, all the universities was closed. So the only um, the only situation that we have is entered to the normal Catholica in Cochabamba. So uh, as I as I speak uh, German, I decide to enter to idiomas to be ich, a teacher. Ich, and then ich, I, ich, 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 I discover that I was made to teach. I love teach. Okay, next question. That I am teaching almost 40 years. Okay, next question, my dear friends and colleagues. Everybody has a bucket list. If you don't, you should. Do you have a bucket list? There are some things, some priorities in life you would, uh, you would like to get, I don't know, like writing a book, planting a tree, having more children, or I don't know what. Katia, do you have a bucket list? One or two things that you would like to do before God takes you to heaven? <laughs> you know, uh, Jaimito, um, I, as I was telling you, I really love uh, teaching children and I experienced teaching children abroad and I fell in love uh, with that. And I would like to continue maybe uh, going to other countries to teach. Uh, for Welcome to Peru. Welcome to Peru, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we need more more uh, more teachers, you know, that uh, that are like specialized because you know first grade is a tough uh, year for t for for children to learn read and write, and especially in English. So I would like to visit more countries doing that. Yeah, well, you could go to Chiclayo where Max lives, or Piura where I live. It's just three hours away by bus. Anytime I love you want, please do it. Jose. Warm weather, like you like, like you enjoy. Uh, yes. Warm Jose. Well, uh, in, in my case, as, as you mentioned before, uh, success has to do with having with having a, a united family. I have a, a child. I have a daughter who is four years old, and I would like to to see her grow and to help her in whatever she needs. And well, one of my bucket list wishes would be to travel around the world, to visit different places. I would like to go to Europe. I had the opportunity to visit the United States like two years ago, and it, it was fantastic. And I, I assume that Europe would be a lot better. So I would like to travel with my daughter and my wife to visit different countries. Well, start, start as I said to Katia, start by Peru. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Beatrice? Beatriz? Oh, yeah, uh, well, uh, no more children, definitely. No, I, I am already a great aunt. I have beautiful uh, uh, um, Marie, uh, Isabella Maite and uh, Samuel David. They, they, they are the children of my nephews and uh, nieces, so I'm happy with that. I would like to travel a little bit more, yes, with my daughter, if uh, God gives me the opportunity. And uh, getting my doctoral degree, it's definitely my, my number one bucket list to do thing. Uh, and I would like to be a volunteer in the Shesuan prov province in China, taking care of baby pandas for three months. I hope I can make it before I go to heaven. If I go to heaven, you know, maybe God decides Come to on, Beatriz, we, That's we, a good we, one. <laughs> we will continue with our international meetings in heaven. Believe me. Yes, absolutely <laughs> true. Thank you so much. And, and, and Maria Elba. Well, I first of all, I would like to continue being um, uh, an excellent mother, and I will dedicate to my grandchildren. They are um, they uh, are going to be graduated of the university soon, very soon. So uh, be with them, be with, uh, be with my family, but I also would like to travel and uh, 
to have relationship with uh, with universities, schools, uh, maybe practice some classes in out uh, abroad, and uh, uh, continue studying. Maybe I I would like to get a a masterado. Thank you so much. And before we go to your final words today in this wonderful round table about challenges, the reality challenges and successes in Bolivia, let me read a few comments in Facebook Live. Arturo Phil from Peru, he says, in my case, I started to be a teacher by chance to pay my university studies. Debra Suarez in the USA, she says, I love hearing about how we all came to the profession of uh, the profession of ELT. In my case, almost 43 years of experience, and I started when I was 17. Araceli Salas from Mexico, she says, I started teaching when I was 15. My goodness, I thought I was the, the, the youngest. I started like when I was 19. And Lise Cor from Colombia, our good friend from Colombia, he's in the United States. Well, he's having the time of his life. And hello from Thailand, Jork Love. Thank you so much, dear uh, Jork Love. Okay, uh, I want to thank everyone here today. Thank you so much for your wonderful time, for all the information you have shared with us, for, for, for all the time you took for yourself to prepare this meeting. Uh, I, I will uh, upload this uh, meeting uh, in the YouTube channel and you will live forever. Everybody will see you in a hundred years, okay? So your final words today, we are going to start with Jose, your final words today uh, about this very interesting round table, Jose. Well, dear Jaime, I, I just wanna say thank you very much for having me and for having hosted this wonderful meeting. Uh, as I said, I am so honored to be among these great professionals and I hope to see you soon again. And I hope to see you, Jaime, in La Paz, Bolivia. I know that- I, I will go- You, you will like Paz. the food in La Paz as well. We, we have okay. uh, a lot of variety, just like in I, Peru. I, I, I will be there. Tu casa es mi casa. <laughs> yes, Thank mi you, casa Jose. is going to be your casa. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to be very welcome. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Jose. Have uh, a great Sunday. Maria Elba. Thank you, Maria Elba. Okay, thank you very much, Jaimito. Um, thank you very much to all my friends uh, with, with, uh, with who we worked for this, uh, for this table round. I am honored to be here and uh, uh, talk with you and all the people that is listening to us. Thank you, Jaimito. We are going to see in, in Peru, I am going to, Go Please. to your to Pura. Come, I will go come. To Lima, but I will travel to Pura. Yes, yes and, I, and I will take you to the beautiful beaches we have here in Pura. Thank you so much, dear Maria Elba. Uh, Katia Terán. Uh, I want to just uh, thank you, Jaime, for this uh, beautiful invitation and Beatricita to, to make me part of this uh, beautiful round table. I would like to add up that. Um, as a teacher English, uh, that we teach English, we have a lot of responsibility nowadays with our younger generations. So I compel to all teachers that are watching us to continuously uh, prepare because we need to give the chance to younger generations to learn English. It is the most useful language in the world. And we need to, to know how to teach these younger students that comes with different intelligence, with different learning uh, styles nowadays. So we need to prepare constantly, update our English uh, teaching skills and our uh, use of technology and educative tools nowadays that they are so uh, important to, to be able to be a good teacher and not just face-to-face, uh, -face, but also online, right? Uh, nowadays with the online classes that are so uh, common to, to have uh, at the schools. So yes, thank you for, your, for, for this opportunity. And I'm gonna take your word. I'm gonna be visiting you, Jaime. Please, please, my casa is to casa, Katia. And something that you mentioned, not only, I, I would add, not only to the younger generations, young teachers, but also 
all teachers like me next year, I will be 60, my dear Katia, I will be 60, sexagenario. And my you friend says, that, my friend, <laughs> it's because the spirit, you know, and, and my friends usually tell me, you are the only one who is so excited about becoming older. And I explain to them that it's a privilege. Now, after the pandemic, it's a privilege, yes or not, Max, to become older. Many people have done You're right. very young. So let's appreciate, let's appreciate all people <laughs> and older generations too. We also need, we also need to be updated. And finally, the organizer of the group of the Bolivian teachers, my dear friend uh, Beatriz. She always, I remember you once told me, Beatriz, that when we were in Ecuador in Guayaquil, I told you that you should give conferences around Latin America, and you have, and not only Latin America, but the USA, and soon I'm sure that you will be rocking in, in Europe, in Asia, and everywhere. Your final words today, Beatriz. Thank you so much, Jaime. I have already started with Africa Elta. <laughs> Uh, yes, I was just thinking about the time we met and I was thinking I the time I was in Piura and uh, not only I met you personally, but we had this opportunity to have this amazing group of friends, international friends we met at the time. I enjoyed Piura swimming with the turtles and uh, I even took one hour of surfing lesson. I know I can make it if I come back. So that is uh, also one uh, part of my bucket list. I have to finish my surfing lessons that I took in Piura. Um, what I wanted to say that when we were having these meetings and when you first send the questions for uh, this round table, I had the opportunity to reflect a lot. And there are lots of challenges for us, not yes. only for the people that want to become English teachers, but we are facing difficult times. Uh, there are not enough jobs. The salaries are not the best, but we are here. We are English teachers because we love it, because I cannot see myself doing something else. I am blessed to have become an English teacher. I'm so thankful. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak up for the Bolivian English teachers. I don't want to say with that we spoke on behalf of everybody, but we would like to say, yes, our reality is not easy. Our reality is difficult, but we love it. And we are going to be here. We are going to continue teaching. Nobody is going to stop us. And meow, 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 meow. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. And before uh, we say goodbye to everyone, remember that on Sunday, September 11, uh, this uh, memorable date for the United States and the world. We will have Elizabeth Ortiz, Ilka Guzman, Luis Bermudez, and Dennis Montaño, who will be talking about the reality and challenges and successes in teaching and learning English in Ecuador. So thank you so much, dear friends. Thank you, Katia, Max, eh, Jose, eh, Angela, Maria Teresa, Maria Elba, and all the people who were following and listening to us in Facebook Live. Uh, many um, people uh, say thank you. Say thank you. And, to and you. also, so happy good. birthday to Araceli. It's her hey. birthday. Hey. Taran, taran, tan, tan. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> tan, tan, tan. Araceli, how old are you? Tan, tan, tan. 25. <laughs> 25. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Have a nice Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Beatrice. Bye bye, guys. Bye -bye. Very nice.